Well, we got a little bit different show for you tonight. We're going to talk about our last week's trip up to HOA in Virginia. How about that? Sounds good. Welcome back, folks. I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. And we had an interesting week last week. If you follow us along, you know we made a trip to Front Royal, Virginia, where we did the Homesteaders of America, and it was absolutely wonderful. So we enjoyed it so much, and we're going to talk about that tonight. Also, we're going to do some garden updates as well. So we came back to cucumbers in the garden. Mm -hmm. This was in your garden. I had a bunch in my garden, too. Yep. I'm so excited. I'm going to make some bread and butter pickles out of these. Mm -hmm. We love our cucumbers. Um, Fall cucumbers is just a treat for us. It is. But what I'm most excited about are the zipper peas. I shelled these last night. They were about a three-fourths, five-gallon sure, bucket. Sure, about what it looks like, yeah. This was just the top picking off of the, uh, the zipper peas there. And uh, folks, if you like to grow cow peas, I would highly encourage you to grow them in the fall of the year. They do a lot better, especially zippers. I talked to a, a guy in Florida earlier in the year that had been growing zipper pea seeds for years and years. He gave me some tips on, on growing zippers. And he's, he always recommends growing them in the fall of the year. Bug pressure has been way down on them. They just growed off so much better uh, growing them in the fall and the springtime. I don't think I'll ever try to grow cow peas again in the spring. And there were no bug things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did not find the first, or what do you call it? Cocoon. Cow pea cucuria. And we can't grow them in the springtime on kind of that. Zipper peas is a crowder pea, in case you didn't know it, and they get their name zipper because they're easy to shell. They just zip right out, and there's the peas there. It's a big pea, rather kind of large pea. We ain't grown zippers in years, mm. but we grew us a nice patch this year, and they have performed well. I'm irrigating them again as we speak, so uh, sprayed them again this mm -hmm. morning. Now, I will say this right here. You do have to stay on a pretty strict schedule, even in this fall of the year, with a uh, pyrethroid insecticide. So we'll spray over a few days with that to keep that cow pea cucurio under control there. Even in the springtime with a strict str uh, spraying program, we have a hard time keeping them under control. Done mm -hmm. so far, so far we're doing really well. I think well. I'm gonna can these. Mm -hmm. I think I'll do a video on canning these peas instead of putting them in the freezer. We have caught ourselves doing more canning lately than what we used yeah. to do. Yeah. We've realized the importance of having canned vegetables over stuff in the freezer just in case. So, um, your corn is so close. Ambrosia corn, we was hoping it'd be ready when we got back. Yeah. But I've noticed with the cool weather, everything's kind of slowed up a little bit. So the corn's probably going to be mm. another week or 10 days. My carrots are about mm, four inches up. I've got Savannah mustard up. I've got... Um, turnips, I got collards, just have, I got my garlic planted. Oh, I just love this time of year. Yep. All, all of our fall crops Broccoli. are looking, broccoli's looking absolutely amazing. Basil, I companion planted some basil. Got some cilantro planted. Cilantro, some zinnias that mm -hmm. have started blooming. Mm -hmm. It's just And like what we're going to be planting next week? Strawberries. Strawberries. Yep. Strawberries have come in. We've started shipping them today, and this is as of Tuesday. Uh, this will air Thursday night, but we've been shipping them for a couple of days. We will resume shipping them next week. And hopefully, if you order strawberries from us, you should get them within the next 10 days. Mm -hmm. And the instructions are in there. We sold out of strawberries, so we don't have any more. So we're getting those out to you where you can get them in the ground for the fall plant. This channel strawberry, you will be absolutely amazed if you've never grown it before, it's one of the sweetest strawberries. You should really have good. brought some in. I should have. I didn't even think about should it. Have. The truck just got here a few minutes ago and we was lucky to get it unloaded. So. <laughs> All right. So we went yep. on a trip. We did. Are you ready for that? I am. Um, we were gone five nights, six days, which is pretty much unheard of for us. It's a lot. We have not done that in maybe two years. And I just want to brag on our employees. Yep. They kept everything going smooth. You were not bothered the whole six days. That's right. Everything was wonderful. Got back. It took me maybe 10 minutes to catch up on my emails. Isn't that wonderful? Yep. Yeah. I just cannot brag on our employees enough. 
and our gardens. You had somebody looking after yours. My neighbor Valerie and Edwin looked after mine. Everything looked perfect. It's just awesome to be able to go away and not have to worry about what you're going to come home to. Yeah, everything looked good. So on the way back, we stopped at, we, we hinted this and that, we stopped at the thing called Overland Expo. We've been wanting a camper for a while. So this is a huge event that's held in the East Coast every year. They hold one on the West Coast. You can look it up, Overland Expo. And looked at all kind of campers. And we was excited when we got there. It was a huge <laughs> event. And we, we were, were overwhelmed. We were more confused when we left than we were when we got So there. this was more of like, um, what do you call it? Off the grid type Off-road camp. camping. Yep. Off-road camping. Um, what do you call that when you just park? With no, it's boondocking. Just boondocking. Um, and we were looking at a, for a van. Yep. And uh, it was way out of our price range. Yep. So we, uh, we, had we to... have had a camper in the past, a small Yep. Camper. And I know some of you see a camper in our videos, but that's not ours. That's the next door neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, but they're quite out of our price range. Yeah, I think everything's going to come back down just a little bit in the next couple of years. But even if they don't, it's okay. It was good, though, yeah, seeing all the all options right. and all the hardcore campers. and yep. Yeah. Everything's just so expensive right yeah. now. When we left from there, a few miles to road, down the road, well, it's always good when you run into these unexpected things. We run into a wine and garlic festival. <laughs> I was excited. Um, so it was like pay one price, and they were, I think, 10, maybe 12 different wineries there. And you could pay a price, and you could sample all their wines. So I was in heaven. He took a nap in the truck. Mm -hmm. Um, and the garlic was interesting. There were several, a few garlic vendors. Yeah, there. I actually did buy about six different varieties of soft neck garlic mm -hmm. to plant. That was exciting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you got a good nap. Yeah. There. They had yeah. really good food. Yeah, it was good. It was a nice little event to run up on. You know, that's what we try to do when we're traveling. We try to give enough time. If we run up on something that's really exciting, we have time to check it out. But, uh, this time, not normally. Yes, we've gotten better about that. We've gotten yeah. better about planning I, I ahead. I did have to really insist that he turn around and go back to but the I line did. and garlic. But I yeah. did. Sometimes I get in go-home mode, and I yeah. was in go-home mode, and I had to back up. And, yeah, you know. last year when we went to HOA, we went in one day and then came back. Overnight. Overnight, and it's what, 12, 12 hours. 12 hours. So this year we broke up going up, and we broke up coming back much mm -hmm. better. Yep. Awesome event, HOA, Homesteaders of America. They had some great speakers there. A lot of vendors, a lot more vendors than what they had last year, and the crowd was really excited as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you a slideshow of the event, some of the pictures when we took there, yeah. let you enjoy that, some of the people that we were able to see to visit with, and we'll be right back. for the Fermented Homestead and I just uh, met up with you guys here at the uh, Homesteaders of America conference and I was just talking about how much I love you guys' seeds and I had ordered from four different uh, seed companies and the hostel seeds were definitely the ones that performed the best, had the best germination rates and the strongest, most vigorous plants. So I was just telling them that and so I figured I'd tell you guys that too. <laughs> Thank you. you bet.
you saw in the slideshow, there were a lot of our affiliates, YouTubers, and a lot of fans. And it was so... A lot of customers. We met a lot of our customers. A lot of customers. They would come up, I'd buy your seed. And it was just so nice. We thank you all. It was such inspiring to meet with our customers, our affiliates, to hear about what they plant and what they like about us. Um, and here's some of their challenges as well. I talked to a lot of people when they was telling me what challenges they have gardening, what they do well with. Mm -hmm. So I was all interested. So it made me come back and think about what we have here. And it kind of inspired me because people dream about having a homestead, having a garden, and um, they think about you've got to have this big homestead, this big garden, and you really don't. If you just have a couple of containers outside with tomatoes and cucumbers, you you can be a homesteader. You do not have to do the full blown, you know, acre and garden and animals. You can be small and still be a homesteader. And one of the, um, and you saw him on the video, one of the boys, um, he was just so excited and he really touched my heart. Connor, was it Connor? Connor, I think was his name. Yep. I hope we didn't mess that up. <laughs> his dad is Noah. Yep. And uh, he hung around our tent a lot and we really did enjoy him. Yeah, it was nice. So, hats off to Connor. Yep. Um, so a lot of different speakers there. Joel Salatin was one of him and his son, uh, Daniel was probably one of some of the highlights to show, talked about a lot of animal stuff because homesteading is kind of broad and it encompasses a lot of animal stuff and also growing your own food. So it was a pretty good mix of both of those. A couple of exciting things that I saw there was there's some new jar lid manufacturers mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is four jars and I can't remember what the other one was, superb, superb jars. But as you know, they've probably been a, a lid shortage for the last year or two. So those couple of new USA manufacturers of those, which was exciting. Yeah. Of course, a lot of small farms that make these handmade things and all that's always cool to see. I got to meet Natalie, the worm farmer, mm -hmm. which I follow because I have my little worm farm going on. And I got to hear her speak. Mm -hmm. And it was just things that I probably should have known that I learned. It was just real enlightening. You always pick up those little nuggets. Yeah, those little like. nuggets. Yep. And also, we was right beside Premier Fencing. If you're familiar with Premier, they always, all the shows we go with, I've been knowing Joe and the guys at Premier for a long time, and they the ones that furnish all the little animal fence and everything for the uh, goats and sheep and chickens and things like that. It's good to see those guys. Stark Brothers was there, our friends from Stark Brothers. Mm -hmm. Good to always see them. We went out to eat with them one night. Mm -hmm. We just had a wonderful time. Yeah, we it's, got to visit with uh, Four Kids in the Farm uh -huh. one night, and they were in charge of doing all the video for the HOA. Yep. Yep. Um, of course, we saw the Stivers, Roots and Refuge, Whispering Willa. Scott Burton. Scott Burton. Um, too many to mention. I hope we catch them all in video. Yeah. So if you didn't get the opportunity to go this year. I'm pretty sure they'll have the same event next year. They probably make plans to go. It's a great event. They start selling tickets in January. They do. Now here's the thing about, you know, you may say, well, that's too far for me to go. What we did notice, and we had a lot of people come there, they're starting these little things scattered all over mm -hmm. the country. Right. In a couple of weeks, there's going to be one in Milton, Florida. The Gulf Coast mm -hmm. meetup. Uh, they have one in the Ozarks in Missouri. That lady come by and talk to us. They're starting one in Indiana. They have one in Tennessee. They have one in Tennessee. And the Oakey Homestead. The Oakey Homestead. So these little things, these little homestead conferences are popping up everywhere. Just kind of get into the, uh, you know, it follow really along. pumps you up, gets you excited. Yep. Yeah, I, I came back kind of excited. Yeah. I did. I came back wanting to do some things. You know? I came back yeah. and I was so excited. My peas were ready. Yeah. My cucumbers yeah. were ready. Yeah. Yeah. It was just exciting. All right, so let's talk about Garden Spotlight for the week. And what we have here, Cheryl Lambert. And Cheryl is in Madisonville, Louisiana. Get my glasses on here. And Zone 9. Let's look at these pictures right here. This picture right here is of her. Cherokee pumpkins, or either it looks like a Cherokee pumpkin. She grows Cherokee. Yeah, that's a Cherokee pumpkin. There Cherokee tan. 
Yeah, look how she put it in the net there to protect it, hold it up, because she's grown it on a trellis, which is kind of neat. You can do that. And with these Cherokees, they are small enough you could grow them on a trellis. I wouldn't recommend growing a big pumpkin on a trellis. Excuse me, but it would definitely work. Also, she grows the speckled ham pumpkin, which I'm going to probably have to grow that one next year. And she loves, uh, she's got plenty of squash. I want you to look at her savannah mustard oh, there. Yeah. Isn't that a big, look at the patch. Man, that's a lot of mustard there. Mm. Mine are up about two inches. I can't wait. Oh, that's that's daikon radishes right oh. there. She's got daikon radishes planted as a cover crop. Here's her savannah mustard. Savannah mustard looks really good. That is an awesome mustard if you haven't tried it. We've talked about it a lot. So, here she is in zone nine. You're looking good, Cheryl. Got it growing on, as they say. The squash is doing good. Yeah. So, thank you, Cheryl, for sending in. And you have the garden spotlight of the week. Old goat. Old goat drawing. From last week. If you can find the old goat figurine on the set. Somewhere. Somewhere. Put in the comments where you found it and we have a drawing every week for the lucky person that mm -hmm. found the old goat. We will send you some coveted Hoss merchandise if we draw your name. Let's see who we got this week. We got Josh. Send us your shipping address to CustServe at .com, and we will get you some coveted Hoss merchandise sent out. Thank you for, for uh Checking out the old goat and finding him because sometimes he gets a little sneaky. It's a little sneaky. Yep. Sometimes he's in a wide open. Yep. Corny joke. Corny joke. I'm ready. Okay. This is because we've been on the road. Kind mm -hmm. of a different. Kind of on the road joke. Huh? On the road joke. What travels around the world that stays in one corner? What travels around the world? It stays in one corner. A stamp. <laughs> it's not really a garden thing. No, oh, it's a, it, yeah. I said it was a travel oh, job. Yeah, a stamp. We get on the road. Okay. Well, that is true. That's true. Corny as All right. Get with the program. Get with the program, Craig. A stamp. Okay. Well, as we said, the strawberries are shipping out as we speak. Yep. And you know what we noticed up there? You know, we live down here in the deep south, but we've seen frost up there in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, frost. Yep, had a good frost up there one morning. So you guys up north, you're getting buried down. It's ready for winter time. For you guys in the south here that's going to overwinter your onions, if you're in the deep south, we got a map on our website showing the different types of onions you need to grow for where you live. If you grow short day onions, you can grow them in the, plant them in the fall of the year and overwinter them and have great onions come springtime. And we have the short day onion plants for sale, pre sale on our website. Right. Three different varieties. We got one red and two granite type. Um, these will ship in November, start shipping the first of November. 52 a bundle. We guarantee 52 a bundle. These actually up to 75 per bundle. So we got those for sale. So go check that out. We will sell out those just like we sold out of strawberry plants. So you want to go ahead and get those. We still have a little bit of elephant garlic yeah, left. A little bit. We don't have any German white, but we do have a little bit of elephant right. garlic left. Yep. I went actually went and checked on that this morning. Yeah. To get a little bit there. So in your comments, um, actually next week we're gonna our show is gonna be on planting strawberries. Yep. Well, so for all of those that order strawberry plants, and you should have them in by the show next week. And inside of there is going to be instructions on what you should do, but we're going to go over that next week in detail and talk about how we plant our strawberry right. plants. Right. And also in the comments, if you have any ideas or suggestions or what you would like to see on the Row by Row show for the um, winter content, put it in the comments below. Thank you. Thank y'all for joining us. Now it's time for you to get off that couch and get dirty.